right, let's move to the next question. Sweepstakes winner may select either a perpetuity of 2000 a month, beginning with the first month, first payment in one month. Achha, monthly perpetuity, huh? Or an immediate lump sum payment of 350,000. Some lottery or lottery is one. Annual discount rate is 6% compounded monthly. Okay. So I have two choices. Either you get 350 or you get 2000 forever. Got it? The rate is 6% compounded monthly. All right. So therefore, the value of perpetuity is 2000 divided by 0 0.005. The PMT, the installment, divided by rate per period. The per period rate is 1 becomes 1 plus 0 0.06 by 12 every month. 0 0.06 by 12 is 0 0.005, which is equals to how much? 400,000. 400, so therefore, this is a better option as compared to 3,50. Is better option as compared to 3,50. So what will be my solution? It is greater than the lump sum, the annuity, the perpetuity is better than the lump sum. The perpetuity is better than the lump sum. I should choose this. Think about it. I can also do the question another way. 350 into 0 0.06 by 12 is equal to how much? Tell me. Seventeen fifty dollars so i can deposit 350 in the bank and i can take 1750 forever and ever and ever so what do i like 1750 forever or 2000 forever 2000 forever so therefore in that way also this option is better i can always go from pmt to pv i can go from pv to pmt also too right or i was thinking of one more way one second one second, I'm forgetting something. Oh, this is okay, 2000.005. Huh. So, also, what you can do is say, suppose, instead of, suppose I need a lump sum payment. Suppose I need a lump sum payment. But you are liking this option better. You are liking perpetuity better based on the time value of money class we are doing. But you want the money, the entire amount of money today. What you can do is you borrow 4 lakh dollars from the bank today. And the bank is going to ask you for an installment, for an interest payment, not installment, for an interest payment at 6% monthly. I'm assuming the rate at which I'm depositing the money in the bank and the rate at which I'm borrowing the money from the bank is the same. That assumption I'm making, which is a bad assumption. If I need the money today, suppose the question, I will add one more line to the question. I wish I'm actually a paper setter. I will add another line to the question that, but you need a lump sum amount today, then what will you choose? Even if I need lump sum amount today, I'm going to choose this option because I can borrow four lakh dollars from the bank today. And I have to pay 2000 to the bank every year, every month. The 2000 that I receive from this, I can pay to the bank directly. Ultimately, time zero, one month, uh, one month, two month, three month, all the cash flow zero, whatever I get from this lottery, I'm going to give it to the bank. How much did I borrow and kept with me? Four lakh. In that case, how much would I have gotten? Three lakh fifty thousand. I can convert a perpetuity to PV and a PV to perpetuity always. Obviously, I'm making an assumption that the rate at which I'm borrowing or the rate at which I can invest is the same. But do you, did you get the idea? That even if I want a lump sum money, I need a lot of money today itself. Even then I should choose this option. Because I can always borrow 4 lakh from the bank, pay 2000 to the bank from this money received forever and ever. And that 4 lakh is mine instead of 3 lakh 50,000. Got it? Next. For a lump sum investment of 2 lakh 50, invested at a stated annual rate of 3% compounded daily. Number of months needed to grow. Ach, I get this doubt quite often and I know the mistakes students make. Let's see. 2,50,000 daily, 3% compounded daily. 3% daily and 2,50,000 
बिकम्स कितना वन मिलियन ना इन हाउ मनी इयर्स अच्छा वही इन हाउ मनी मंथ्स ओके द क्वेश्चन इज हाउ मनी मंथ्स ठीक है द क्वेश्चन इज हाउ मेनी मंथ्स थ्री परसेंट इज डेली कंपाउंडिंग रेट Now what I've seen students also do is so two fifty. Okay, let's see if I can do it with the formula. Two fifty into one plus point zero three by three sixty five to the power three sixty five into n equal to thousand. It's a. I can calculate this way. I can calculate this way, na? No? I can do it without the PVFP thing also, to. Yeah, I can do it. Let's let's try it this way. So this will be thousand divided by two fifty. Let's see, I'm doing the PVFP method also. Thousand divided by two fifty. This goes here to the power. No, if it ln fell in, करना पड़ेगा तुम लोग को. I've not taught log till now, na? ठीक है आई नॉट टॉट लॉगरिदम दो गाइज हू अंडरस्टैंड लॉगरिदम यू कैन डू इट विद दिस मैथड ऑल्सो सो आई कैन सॉल्व ना आई कैन सॉल्व दिस एंड गेट द इक्वेशन आई एम नॉट गेटिंग इन टू दिस राइट नाउ एक बार इसको छोड़ो सो दिस आई एम नॉट बींग एबल टू सॉल्व आई नॉट टॉट यू कंटिन्यूस रेट लॉग इन ऑल टेल नाउ This I'm not being able to solve like this. Anyways, it's okay. Just just focus over here. Let me teach you the easy method first. This is FV. This is PV. That's okay. I can take I by Y is equal to point zero. No point zero three. No, no. It'll not be point zero three. It'll be three divided by three sixty five. I by Y is three three uh, three divided by three sixty five. I can do that. Please make sure again the minus and the plus the cash inflow and outflows of the opposite sign. Otherwise, you'll not get the answer. I can compute n. Correct. I can compute n. What is the answer? Do this. We'll ignore this one. Sixteen thousand eight sixty-seven. So these are the number of days. N is in number of days because I've taken I by Y number of days. Is this okay? Two fifty is the investment. Thousand is the uh, future value. The rate per day is three by three sixty-five. There is no doubt about it. Three percent per per annum compounded daily. I'm getting the I'm getting N computed, which is sixteen eight sixty-seven days. Now the problem is the mistake students have made very often with this question is divided by thirty is equal to how much? Five fifty two point two four. Five fifty two point two something months. Five sixty two is not the answer, which is a wrong answer. Every month does not have thirty days. There are months with twenty eight days, thirty days, thirty one days. You can't assume that every single month has got a thirty day. So this. Is wrong. Sixteen eight sixty seven days divided by three sixty five is the number of years into twelve is the number of months. It's a longer time horizon, right? Sixteen eight sixty seven divided by three sixty five. It's forty six point two years. That into twelve is five fifty four point five. That is five fifty five months. So, if you directly divide the number of days divided by thirty, you get a wrong answer. Why do you get a wrong answer? Because if I'm taking assuming thirty days to be a month, I'm assuming there are three sixty days in a year, but there are three sixty five days in a year. You've got five extra days. It's not half months thirty, half months thirty one. First of all, you got an extra month with thirty one. July August. I don't know if you people have done that in school, right? And you have a twenty eight day February. Got it. So, therefore, this answer is going to be wrong. What if you convert the interest rate into a monthly rate? Then that should work. 
But again, when you're converting it, do you do it to the path 30 or something? No. You don't do it to the path 30. That will work. So what she's saying is that what if my PVFE is that 250 and 1000. I by Y, 3, 1, 1 becomes 1.0. No, sorry. 1 becomes 1, point, 1 plus 0 0.03 by 365 in one day. If you do it to the path 30, you're again making the same mistake. You'll again get 562 as the answer and you're wrong. But yes, what we can do is to the path 365 divide by 12. 1 becomes 1 plus 0.03 by 365 in one day. It becomes to the path 365 in one year. Therefore, it becomes to the path 365 by 1 by 12, uh, by 12 in one month. This is what $1 will become in one month. And you've not assumed any 30 day, 28 day kind of nonsense here. So this minus one is the interest portion. So this is equals to 0 0.03 divided by 365 plus one to the power bracket open 365 divided by 12 bracket close equals to 1.002503 minus one. So I will put I by Y. 0.2503 if you want even more accuracy 0 02 got this now if you do the question and compute n because your i by y is a rate per period rate per month n will be the number of months you will get the correct answer try this are you understanding the mistake? There are small mistakes you can make very, very, uh, uh, what do you say? Innocently, you can make these kind of mistakes. You're, you cannot make that assumption. You're losing five days and it's a 42 year time horizon. Had it been a two, three year kind of time horizon, your gap would not be like, the correct answer is 555 with this. The answer is 562 with this, right? We are getting a 562 something over here and we're getting a 555. You have a gap of seven months. You understanding? Because it's a 42 year time horizon over here. If the question would have been if your n was equal to 12 months, 15 months, something, then your answer would not be so different. You're assuming 360 day year instead of 365 day year if you take a 30 day month. Do not assume a 30 day month. You understanding this? That's the catch in the question. Bolo. Confused? Okay. Next question, an investment 5 lakh today that grows to 8 lakh after 6 years has a stated annual interest rate closest to. Okay, so we've got a 7.5% continuous, Achha, I'll, I'll skip this question, I'll do this, I'll come back to this after continuous rate is done. A client plans to send a child to college for 4 years starting 18 years from now having set aside money for tuition she decides to plan for room and board also she estimates these costs to any thousand per year payable beginning of each year by the time her child goes to college if she starts next year and makes 17 payments into savings account what annual payment does she make okay four years starting 18 years from now This time zero, you will go to college on this date. So your college is 18 to 19, 19 to 20, 20 to 21, 21 to 22. All right. This is your four years of college. Your child is going to the college starting from four years from now. Got it? You're estimating the cost 20,000 per year, payable at the beginning of each year. Please do not make a mistake. This 20 will start from 17 or 18. This 20,000 is going to start from 17 or 18. 17. Oh, 22 galat bana. 1, 2, 3, 4. No, thik hai, thik bana. Sorry. Are, sorry. You're going to college when you're turning at the 18th year. 
you will take admission one year in advance you will pay fee one year before this is the first year of college this is the second year of college this is the third year of college this is the fourth year of college at 18 you joined the college at 19 you are giving your first year exams I'm paying the tuition fee at the beginning of the year. That is, I'm paying the tuition fee at the year 18, not 17. Please don't make these kind of mistakes. Got it, Siddharth? You're understanding? My child is going to college starting from 18 years from now. He's going to start going to college from the 18th year. I don't have to, I cannot pay the fees at the end of the uh, uh, first year of college. I have to pay the beginning of the college. Beginning of the college does not mean when I'm in class 12. You understanding? First year is 18 to 19. Beginning means at 18. Read very carefully. If she starts saving next year and makes 17 equal payments at 5% per annum compounded annually, what is the investment she needs to make? 17 investments this lady is going to be making for her child. Starting from today or starting from next year? Next year. Just starting from next year. First year karna chahiye tha. Then it will become beginning sum. She is going to make 17 equal annual installments, correct? I need the value of this. It's a very, very simple question. So first, I need the PV over here. This PV becomes the FV of my this question, this part of the question. How will I calculate the PV? N equal to 4, PMT is 20, I by Y is 5. And compute PV. Right? What is the PV? 70 is 919. 719? Whatever. So 70,919. I will not remove this data from the calculator. Now you people need to get more comfortable with the calculator. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to type FV. I'm going to press FV in the calculator and save this in FV. I will overwrite every single other value. I will make PV equal to zero because right now PV is also stored over there. I by Y I don't have to change. That is already there. N equal to 17. N equal to 17 and compute PMT. This shall be my answer. I don't have to overwrite I by Y because that's going to be the same. The question is not saying that she will invest at a different rate and then after the kid goes to college, I'll invest at a different rate. There's nothing of that sort given in the question. Compute the answer. Calculate. 744? 2,742. 0. 0. Is that the answer? No. 2,744.50. That's your answer. That is what she needs to deposit every year for the next 17 years to fund a four installment college fee starting from year 18. Tell me, good till here.